Hello Tikis. In the previous session, we learned how to create a new process. In this session, we will learn about variables and also we will see how to create variables and how to assign values to variables in this process. First of all, we will see what is variable. Variable is simply a data container that is associated with a name and value. In UiPath Studio, variables are used to store multiple types of data ranging from generic value, text, number, data table, time and date. All right, now I will show you how to create a variable. Let me switch to UiPath Studio. If you see over here, in the previous session we have created process underscore first underscore calculator. Let me go ahead, let me open it. If you see here, in the previous session, we have worked on the calculator, right? If you see, this is the container, the sequence container, we have dragged and dropped, and then we have opened an application, and uh, we have done some, uh, we have dragged some do container, or we worked on the do container, and then we have given some input values over here to manipulate, and then we are going to close the application. If you see over here, I have given directly values to the calculator without assigning any variables. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign variables and I'm going to create variables and assigning the values to the variables and from there I'm going to take the inputs. How can I go ahead and create the variables? If you see over here, on the bottom side we are having variables, arguments and imports. So just select the variables pan and then you can see the create variable over here. Now if you are selecting somewhere else on the uh, workplace, you don't find the variables. You have to select the sequence and then you can find the create variable. Now I will show you how to create a variable. So select any sequence or select any container, then you will find it out the variable over here. Double click on that. Now, if you see, by default, it is coming as variable one and variable type is string and scope is main calculator. This is the scope of which I have been selected over here. You can see I have selected main scope, main calculator so that it is the scope over here is main calculator. Let us assume you have selected and then I'm going to create a variable. And then if you see, this is a do scope that what I'm going to get it. Anyhow, that I will explain to you more about the scope later on. And then you can see over here default, what are the values you are going to give it? The default values will be assigned over here for the variable. Now, as a first thing, the name. So in the calculator that I have to pass two values, that is, first of all, I have to give the variable as some values as A. So I'm just giving, and the data type, I want to enter the numeric, right? So that you can see if you drag and drop, if you drop down, you can see over here, you are having data types as boolean, int32, int string, object, system, data dot, data table, array. And if you want more data types than variable types, then you can go for the browse for types. Let me click on that. Now you can see there are the different, different types that what we are having. For an example, if you want anything like email, that you can see email addresses, address collection, there's a lot of data types are available in your path. Now, I'm not going to select anything. I'm just clicking on cancel. Now, for the A, what I'm going to do, I'm selecting in 32. And the scope is, I have given for the main, right? Main calculator. And the default value, I'm going to give it as 10. So, whenever you are not assigning any values, then in that case, it will take the default values. In the same way, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one more variable as B and the same data type that I'm going to give it as in 32. And the, you know, I'm going to put it to the scope as main calculator and the default value, I'm going to give it as five. Now let me go ahead, let me save it. I have saved it successfully. If you see on the right hand side, that properties also, what are the name that what we have and the default value, and you can see the scope and type, what is the data type that we have given it. Now, if you see, I have created two variables. Now what I have to do, I have to pass this value. I have to pass this variable in my do sequence. How can I go ahead and do that? Let me go to the properties. 
Now, if you see over here, whenever I have selected this, I'm going to the properties and then you can see the text, select the text from the properties and then you can see the three dots. This is nothing but expression. Just go ahead for the expression. Now, what you have to do, you have to give the variables over here to pass as an input. So what are the things that we have to have? A. If you see over here, it is the IntelSense. It is a beautiful feature providing by the UF path that IntelSense automatically comes over here. That is A. Then what I'm going to do? Plus, what is the next value? B. I'm going to add two values, A plus B. And then I'm just click. If you see over here, I'm going to add two values. Which values are there? They are the integer values. But if you see over here, this is the text string. So I want to get the output in string format. So that what I'm going to do, I'm going to converting this into the string format. So a little bit of .NET code, C sharp code, having a knowledge about that is the advantage over here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just giving dot, it's a, you know that the properties that I'm going to do. And then you can see dot to string. So I'm adding two values and then whatever the output I'm going to converting into text format that is string. And then I'm going to click on OK. Now if you observe the text over here, the expression has been modified. That is A plus B and we are going to converting into the string. Now let me go ahead, let me save this. Or you can use Control S to save it uh, for the shortcut. Okay, now we have created variables and uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, call as an input for the calculator. Now, let me go ahead, let me debug it. Now, we'll see what is the output that we are going to get it whenever we are, you know, created a variables and assign some value to that. Now, if you see that what are the values 10 plus 5, it has, what are the input that we have given, the output is 15. That, uh, you know, that we have seen the output 10 plus 5 as 15. Okay, this is how we are going to create a variable, but there is another process also to create a variable. How can we go ahead and we can do that? So this is, we can say as a second method to create a variable. Now select the same, uh, you know, text into, and then go to properties and pin this properties over here, and then go to text over here, and then go to expressions. And now, now what I'm going to do, I'm just once again deleting it. So I want to add A plus B plus C values. Okay, let's assume I want to add 10 plus 5 plus 2 values. Okay, now already we have created A plus B variables. If I want to create another variable C over here from the expression editor, select Control K from your keyboard. I'm repeating again. Control plus K is the keyword you have to use it. Okay, and then I'm going to give the variable name as C and then I'm going to click enter for my keyboard. Now if you see by default, whenever you have created, clicked on enter, that value C over here, you can see over here, C string has been by default has been created. Now click on okay. Now what is the string we have to do that? We have to con uh, variable type that we have to give to in 32. Okay, and the default value, I'm going to give it as seven. Okay, and then I'm going to saving it. Now going back and then I'm going to do the expression over here, I'm going to change it. Now if you see, directly if I'm going to give it, it is going to give an error. What is the error you can see over here? This is the error that what we are having. Let me cancel once again, let me show you. You can see compile errors encounter process expression C. That's the mean from integer to string, we are unable to convert it. So what we have to do, again in the same way what we have done, A plus B plus C dot to string, I'm going to convert into the string. So and then I'm going to click on OK. And then you can see the values over here. Now let me go ahead, let me save it by clicking on Control S shortcut. Okay, from the keyboard, and then I'm going to click on the debug file. Now, if you see, so on my screen that you will find, open the calculator, and then it will be entering the values 
you know, uh, directly it is going to give the values 10 plus 5 plus uh, 7 equal to 22. This is how, you know, we are going to create a variables in two methods. Now, I will show you how to assign a values to variables. Okay, so I'm in the activities. Now, if you see over here, you can go and search for the assign or else in the favorites already it is assigned there. Let me drag and drop onto my do activities or before activities. Okay, before do. If you see over here, whenever I'm, you know, drag and drop my assign activity to the workplace, it is creating this, uh, this sequence or this container. You can see uh, assign, I'm having three variables, one is the A comma B comma C values. There's the Intel sense when you, you know, it is providing the Intel sense whenever you type A, so automatically you are going to get the properties over here. And then you're going to assign the values. So it, this is not the default values I'm assigning. I'm actually giving the inputs to the text type. Okay, so that what I'm going to give, I'll give some different values like, you know, 11. So I have given, I have assigned only one value. What will happen, you know, if I'm not assigning any other values? By default, it will take the another variables, what are the values that we are, we are having. If you see, yeah, I'm having 10, but I have assigned some values over here that is, you know, 11 over there. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm drawing one more time, that is one more value onto my do container, then I'm going to type B. If you see the Intel sense, that I'm going to give the values as C, B as some 15. And then I'm going to assign some more value over here, that is for the C, that I'm going to give it as value as zero. So now I have assigned the values before default values. Now let me go ahead, let me save it. Let me go and let me run it. If you see, what are the values that have given? 10, 11 plus 15 equal to 26 plus zero. If you see over here, totally that value is 26. Okay, now you got the output of the 26 and then it is going to be, you know, closing the application. Now if you see, what happened over here? If you see, whenever you are going to typing it, before that I have assigned it. What will happen if I am going to assign after the do activity? Okay, now in that case, you know, what are the default values that is, will be there, then it will come over there and, you know, it is not, after that it is going to assign the values which is not required at the time of calculation. Okay, let me show you that also. Let me drag all these things after my do activity then it will take the default values, whatever we have given. We are not assigning before the do container. We are doing it after, you know, completion of the manipulation so that, you know, it won't take these values, but it will take the default values. Now, let me go ahead, let me save it. Let me run once again. If you see the process execution has started and now the calculator has been opened and then you can see the value as 22. So whenever you have assigned the values, you know, before the do container or before the type into, uh, you know, activity, then it is coming, uh, this is the output as coming as 26, but you have done it after that so that, you know, it is coming, uh, it is not initializing or assigning any values to the variables. And then it is taking the default values and then it is going to be, you know, manipulating and it is going to be add all three values and giving as the output as 22. Now I hope you understand what is variable and how to create a variable in two ways that we have created it and then how we are going to assigning the values to the variables by using UiPath Studio. Thank you for watching UiPath tutorials. If you have any queries related to this concept, please post them in the comment section. Stay tuned. I will see you in the next session. Till then, bye-bye. Have a nice day.